Happy Easter. Well, I'm at one of my best friend's places. He lives on the Boulogne River in St. George, Queensland. Beautiful part of Queensland. Everyone you'll hear in the background, some ski boats, kids having fun, lots of good times. Why am I really here? Well, not just to have Easter eggs, but actually celebrate the beginnings of expedition. Myself and Terry are two people that really talked about this project. One of the key features he's been looking for is to carry a bit more payload. He wanted a bit more water, a little bit bigger kitchen, and a little bit more capacity to stay off grid. And that's where this conversation started. How could we build a van that would suit everything that we wanted? We didn't want to have so many restrictions. I'd already been having conversations with Dave Bigger at Zone about this van that we wanted to build, something completely different to what we'd already done. We'd built some very small vans, but we really wanted something that would go really extreme, would handle the conditions, be able to handle really rough tracks, have really good capacity for water, for solar and for power, and then needed to have a really awesome outdoor kitchen. Now there's lots of outdoor kitchen options out there in the market, there's lots of different things, but we wanted something different to anyone else. I wanted the ability to be able to pull up, open up my fridge, open up my kitchen area, just have full custom setup with cooking that I could just instantly do. So one of the real problems with gas for us in the past has been wind. Induction cooking fixes that. Second thing that I wanted is we do a lot of cooking on fires and fire pits and things, so I'm not always locked to the van for actually my cooking styles, but there is times we want to roast something fast, wanted to be able to carry my air fryer. The third thing was, I still wanted to be able to have my kids, my friends, be in a community. And part of the problem I had when I was in my uh, full-size caravan, my friends still had hybrids and some had camper trailers, I actually felt unable to be in that community as much because I cooked a lot inside. I had outdoor cooking, but a very limited amount. Why not build a hybrid on dual axles, heaps of water, and all those features. And that's exactly what we did. Now this is the prototype, and by the time you end up buying one, I would say to you, it'll be nothing like this in a lot of ways. We originally started out, this was to be a 16 foot caravan. This will end up a bigger caravan than what this current one is. For the price point that we're looking at with all those features to be Australian made with Australian quality components, it's gonna have to really tick a lot of boxes for people. So the first thing we've decided, we'll make it a little bit longer. It could end up 18 or 19 foot, but it'll be on a very short chassis. Now this chassis has handled everything we're throwing at. It. The water, we're happy with. We've got 300 litres of water, really happy with that setup where you can have your separate drinking. But really, the biggest thing that we've learned is solar. Now, mine here right now, I've got my 1100 watts, I think, on this one's roof. And I've also got a 240 watt solar panel from Red Arc running with it in parallel. The next thing, I really want to change this kitchen. Straight away we've realised we've actually put the fridge in the wrong spot. It's got a massive door on this first prototype and it's a little bit too big for my wife. So we'll separate that for the next model. Now the layout, we completely change inside. This one, the idea is we've got an external 110 litre fridge and we've got a 170 litre internal fridge freezer. Now that's working great. I'm just gonna move them around where they are. The other biggest change I would say that we've learned through this journey, we balance our vans as best we can and get all the weight over your axles. So then it's the most stable as it can be. Now we've tried three different types of underbed air conditioning and I'm not happy with any of them. So we will be going back to a rooftop air conditioning because I want to take this to Bemica, I want to take this to the Kimberleys, I want to take this to those places that you normally wouldn't go at the wrong time of year and I want you to actually be cool. So this van's got diesel heating, which I've used a little bit, but I can tell you from our previous vans, diesel heating is the only way to go. We've also got a diesel hot water system working fantastically because it's pretty much instantaneous. Once you get that hot, you get continual hot water. The other thing I've learned in this van so far is I can virtually turn this van at 90 degrees. It would be the sharpest turning that we've ever had on a Zone RV caravan. So some other facts that we've learned along the way and what we will change moving forward is our roof line. Now, we've been waiting so long for our 3D printer, it didn't turn up in time. So basically the one you see behind us, 
we're building by hand. Now that's hampered us a lot on the roof line and if you look at this van closely, this is not the finished product for what the real expedition will be. But what we've done, we've tested out our actuators because this had to be done by my wife, that she could press a button up goes the roof. Press another button, out goes the awning. Drop down the legs. And thirdly, you had to be easy enough that we could set it up within less than five minutes. So some of the big Ks we've done in this van is moving at those speeds at 100 kilometers an hour. And if you're gonna do a 10 hour day, that's a lot of heat for bearings. That's a lot of heat for suspension and shocks. It's all got ATX suspension, cruise master suspension across our entire fleet. But especially in Expedition, what we decided was ATX will be the only thing that you'll be able to option and disc brakes. If you look at the way the industry is moving and changing, disc brakes are the way to go. So a couple of key things that we learnt building the prototypes. This one here, we open out the back. Now, we wanted to have an external washing machine. We thought that it'd be great to have your spare wheel covered up. But what have I learned since I've taken this van out? Those are a couple of things we want to change. I do not want any sealed area at the rear of our van. That's all internal room that we could actually give you. So when the 3D printer arrives, we'll be able to change that really fast and make the van a little bit longer internal but not actually the body changing so this will give you maximum space inside one of the key things had to be a separate toilet and a separate shower now we've already gone composting toilets in 2022 and for the ever more at this point we'll continue on that path so this van here i'm actually testing one of the really early stage ogo which is a smaller composting toilet to the ones that we use in our big vans. But it seems to be so far working really well. And then we'll have a complete customized separate shower. Also what we want is a cafe lounge so that you and your partner, if it's you and your kids, there is somewhere inside you can sit down, have a meal. We all know if you travel anywhere, you're gonna have mozzies. Even here last night, we had a few bugs. So you do need to get inside and get away from that. Something that was a must for me on this build. One of the real keys too of this van is the front toolbox area. And that's basically like your little shed. Now I've tried my best to help you set that up where you'll be able to put your fishing rods, all your gear, but set up better than normal. If you look in one of our big vans, we really have to utilize a lot of bags. It's basically quite a large area, but it's fairly condensed the way you have to pack it. So basically in the front of this van, you will find a stand up area. Basically, if you can step in there, you could actually put your stuff away in the toolbox. So one of the other key things, what I've learned from this van is we had about a 45 centimeter high area under the double bed in the front. Now, one of the things I think we can easily gain a lot more space and a lot more areas for you to put all your goodies is under that bed. So we're actually raising that to 80 centimeters. I've already talked to the guys back in design. That'll be the first thing that we change. It's really important for us that this is a vehicle that you'll be able to go and explore anywhere that you want to. If you're going to go on that expedition across wherever it is, the Simo, if you're going to the Kimberleys, we'd like you to be able to take your inflatable boat with an electric motor, whatever it is that you're doing, this is the vehicle for you. And if you think about it, that's our passion. That's why I'm out here. We're not just people that hide away and we're sitting in rooms and we don't know about you, the customer. We're actually here doing it ourselves. Every chance I get, I'm out there on the road. I'm traveling Australia as much as I can. I wish I could see a lot more, but unfortunately I have to work and trying to produce great products for you, the customer. But it's our passion to build you something that we know that we and our families would love and it accommodates all those issues. And more importantly, that you're gonna get this product and be able to push the limits, go to those places. Now, all my friends have got a lot of single axle little trailers where they're trying to go to all these places. 300 liters of water is really hard to put on a single axle small trailer. It's a lot of load on two wheels. Spread that on four, so much easier. And I've proven that so much easier on the beach, so much easier when you park up. I haven't even run stabilizers on this one. In production, yes, of course, we'll give you stabilizers. Now we're running a two kilo washing machine. We've got you set up that you'd be able to live off grid, but still more importantly, be comfortable. Trust me, you're gonna need heating at times, you're gonna need cooling, and more importantly, a really good bed and a really good area to eat when there's no flies, there's no bugs, and especially sand flies. You can know and trust, we've put the time, we've put the effort, and we've invested like no one else in the industry with this product to give you the best expedition vehicle that's possible for you and your family. So I look forward to continually testing this and our team back at Zone. 
We look forward to bringing it to you one day in the future, but you're gonna see a few of these videos on the road to expedition. I'll look forward to catching up soon.